In this video, I am going to start with advantages of database. The first advantage is it reduces data redundancy. Redundancy means duplication of data. Database management system contains number of files and that are stored at different locations in a system or even across multiple systems. It could be stored in one or two more systems. Because of this, there are multiple copies of the same file which can lead to data redundancy or duplication of data. For example, the contact details which are maintained by the school office is also with the class teacher. It means the duplicate data is there. Duplicate file is there with the class teacher and the office. But database management system ensure that there is no duplication of data. This redundancy or duplication in a database could be prevented as there is single database or single file and if there is any change that change is done in that file and change is reflected everywhere. Let's take an example. I want my contact number to be changed. I'll go to office and I'll ask them to change the contact number. But if this information is not updated with the class teacher, she is having the wrong data. So there is inconsistency. Inconsistency means different data at different location. The office has your updated contact number while your class teacher has your old contact number. So there is a problem that is data inconsistency. DBMS ensures that there is no duplicacy of data. If there is any change, it will be done at one single place and the same change is reflected to all the users. Next one is sharing of data. As I told you that the data is stored at central location. So the student data is stored in a server. Now this student data could be fetched by office people could be fetched by your class teacher, could be fetched by you, your subject teacher, etc. So sharing of data is there. But sharing of data is done only with the authorized user. If you want to access your data on a school website, you have to enter your ID and your password. Only then you are allowed to view the data. You can't see any other student's data. So this is the authorization which is ensured by DBMS. Next is data integrity. Integrity means the data should be accurate and it should be consistent. If there is any change, it should be reflected to each and every user who is using the database. The student record is accessed by office people, accessed by your class teacher, accessed by your subject teacher or even you. So if there is any change like you have changed the contact number, the change Updated contact number should be visible to all of the user, be it be your class teacher, subject teacher, you or office people. Next is data security. Data security means the data should be secure. It should not be accessed by each and every one. In a company, the data entry operators are allowed to enter the data only. They are not allowed to view the previous records. The data entry operator, they can just add the data. They cannot edit it. They cannot delete the records. So this is how we ensure the security. The director has all the rights. He can delete the data. He can change the data. He can add whatever he want to. But the lowest level who are like data entry operator, they are not allowed to delete any records. Then we have privacy. Of course, you maintain privacy with your apps. The same way database management system also ensures privacy. All the data is not accessed by all the users. There are certain limits. For example, this table is maintained by a class teacher. So the class teacher can view all the four columns. But the subject teacher, she does not need the fourth column. The date of birth is not required by the subject teacher. So only the first three columns access will be given to the subject teacher. So this is how you can maintain the privacy in database. Next is backup and recovery. Database management system takes care of the backup and recovery. It automatically takes the backup of the data and in case of any uh, problem or if the system fails, it restores the database after the system crashes. 
Last is data consistency. It ensures that the database there is no data duplication. In case there is any change, the change should be reflected to all the locations. Like you have the bank account, you can access your money, your bank account details anywhere within that country. So if you transact it, if you do some transaction, you take out some money, that amount is deducted from your account. It's not like that. You are in a different city, so it won't be deducted. It will be deducted and the same amount will be reflected at each and every city in the country. Next is the features of database. The first one is a database can have one or many tables. Like in case of student, there could be file for admission, there could be file for the marks, there could be file for attendance and result. So we have different files or you can say different tables. Like a big company would have in a database, one table is for product, one table is for supplier, one table for its customer detail, one table for order received and so on. Then each table in the database contains some information like the student table, student details, student marks. We'll be having only the marks in different subjects. Student personal information, we'll be having the personal information. Student attendance record, we'll be having the records related with the attendance itself. So each table is having some related data and some different data which is different from other tables. Then in each table, we should have one of the column or field which is able to identify each record uniquely. For example, in the class, I can have two or three students with the same name. Then how I'm going to differentiate between these students in a class? Of course, with the roll number. So roll number is the field or the column with which I can uniquely identify them. That column which helps you to uniquely identify a record is known as primary key. So in DBMS, it is necessary to have a primary key. One column should be assigned as primary key and that column must identify each and every record with the unique values. So you cannot have name as the primary key, but you can have row number as the primary key. Row number could be used as primary key in a class. But if I have two classes together, there could be row number one, two, three in first class, Similarly, 1, 2, 3 in the second class. Then how I'm going to differentiate between the two classes students? In that case, I can use the admission number. Admission number will help me to uniquely identify roll number 1 of 10th A, roll number 1 of 10th B if the names are same in both the sections. Look at this table. Can I use name as primary key? No, because I have two records, Ravi Ravi with the same name. Similarly, standard, I have 10th, 10th, 10th. Similarly, section, I have the repeated values of A. So, none of the column could be used as primary key. Neither I can use name, standard or section. Look at this table. Here, row number 19, 20, 21, 22. These values are different. However, name, standard and sections are same. They are having the same value. A, 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 X, 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 Ravi, Ravi. So, but roll numbers are unique, they are different. So, roll number could be used as primary key. Now, look at this table and tell me what could be the primary key, which column could be the primary key. Order ID, customer name, customer address, contact number, sale date, item bought. Can there be two columns which could be there as primary key? Write in the comment section. Now, you know about primary key, but we have one more term. Composite primary key. What is this? Composite primary key means when we have more than one column which could be used to identify each and every record. Let's understand this with these two tables. First look at client table. Here the fields are client ID, name, address, contact number. So obviously client ID is the primary key in this table. But over here look at the sales table. Here, I have used order ID and client ID together to identify each and every record in the sales table. So, when I have more than two columns which are used as primary key, it is known as composite primary key. This is the definition of primary key. It's a set of one or more attributes. Attribute means the columns. Like over here, the name, the student ID is the attribute that uniquely identify tuples within a relation. Tuples means the rows. 
A primary key is a unique value that identifies a row, record or tuple in a table. Table is also known as relation sometimes. Then foreign key, it is used to represent the relationship between the two tables. It's a non-key attribute whose value are derived from the primary key of some other table and it is known as primary key in the current table. Let's understand it with the example. Now there are two tables given as a relation 1, relation 2. The first one is student and the second one is department. There are two tables or two relations, student and department. In the student table, we have three columns or three fees. You can say student ID, name, course. And in department table, we have two fields, department name and student ID. Can you see there is one column same within these two tables? And what is that column? That is student ID. The student ID is the primary key in the table student. Now this column is also there in department table. So the primary key of student table is used in department table also to refer the records to connect these two tables. Like if I want to find out what is the department for the student John. How can I find out in the department table? For this I will link the table student and department with the common field which is student id 101 so i'll see 101 is cs department it means john is having the cs department now the primary key of the first table is used to refer the second table values in second table that's why it is known as foreign key a foreign key is used to represent the relationship between the two Two tables. So this student ID is the foreign key which is creating the relationship between student and department and the value of are derived from the primary key of the table student and this is used for reference in another table that's in another table and that's why it is foreign key in this current table. Now we are left with candidate key. What is candidate? Look at client table. Here client ID could be the primary key. Can we use contact number also as primary key? What about the address? I think address could also be used as primary key because each and every individual or employee or client has unique address. I can use client ID, address or phone number as primary key. So the client ID, address and contact number or phone, they are the candidate key. But when I combine the two keys uniquely identify a record in a table, then it is known as composite primary key like order ID and client ID combined together. Let's revise some terminologies in case of table. Student ID, phone name, surname, date of birth, they are the field name or the columns. We have one, two, three, four, five rows over here. Rows or you can say record or tuple, T-U-P-L-E, tuple. This is the primary key field, student ID, which helps us to uniquely identify each and every student over here. Then this is the whole table and the data inside a record, they are data item. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have four data items in each record. I hope every point is clear to you. In case you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Tune into my channel for more such videos. Thank you so much.